Hello everyone, it's Daryl, the Northern Vinyl Guy, and I'm back here on YouTube with another video. Um, today I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to make a video of my uh, recent vinyl finds, uh, when I had returned from my trip from Italy and Greece in early March. Uh, upon my return, I had to stay overnight uh, in uh, Timmins, Ontario, and I checked out some uh, thrift stores and stuff like that while I was there, and I managed to pick up some, uh, about 20 records, um, for about a dollar each. So these are in really good shape, and I think I got them in really good prices. Um, and then there's going to be other records that I'm going to go over uh, over the course of some videos uh, that I had received back in December uh, when I was out getting my son and daughter uh, for Christmas vacation. So I did pick up some thrift finds while I was in Timmins as well in late December. So this is going to be a series of videos. I don't want to go over all 20 of them right away, uh, plus the other ones that I got in December. Um, and... I was thinking of doing another video. I did receive some uh, Secret Santa records um, the week before Christmas from some people at work. And if you're interested in finding out what those Secret Santa records are, please leave a comment in the comment section below and uh, I can do a video of those particular records as well. So yeah, some pretty cool stuff coming up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this up into a series of about four or five different videos. I'll probably do about you know five or six records per uh, vinyl find and uh, kind of go over what they are and uh, whether I like them or not. And in fact, I'll spoil it right now. I haven't listened to any of them. I've just checked out the conditions. Um, so some of them, you know, I know some of the songs on them, but I haven't actually had a full listen of these albums. So this first video in the series of uh, vinyl finds for the early part of 2024, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some Canadian uh, artists as uh, that's kind of my, my go-to. I love Canadian music and like to support uh, those, those musicians and bands. Um, so I have um, about five or six Canadian musicians and or compilation album and or I do have one KTEL on here um, and I'll go over that uh, once I get to it. So without further ado, um, here I go with my recent vinyl finds. Once again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do click the subscribe button. Please leave me a like and a comment in the section below. Uh, feel free to do so. All right, so first one that I found was Gordon Lightfoot, uh, and this is his uh, album Endless Wire from 1978. Um, not too familiar with this particular record. Um, after doing a little bit of research, though, I did find out that the song Daylight Katie, which is the side one opening track, uh, is actually a re-release from a 1968 album. Um, so he re-recorded it. And then there were some other songs on here, Dreamland and The Circle is Small. Sorry, not Daylight Katie. The Circle is Small is a re-recording. But Daylight Katie and um, The Circle is Small and Dreamland all landed in the top uh, 20 here in Canada on the, the contemporary charts. Um, so I am looking forward to giving this a spin. Um, and of course, this is on the Warner Brothers uh, label. Um, so kind of cool find there. Secondly, um, found a little bit of Anne Murray. I did mention Anne Murray on a previous video. Uh, I don't think that she gets the amount of love that she deserves. Uh, this is her album from 1971, uh, Straight, Clean, and Simple. And it is on the Capitol Records, the one with the uh, little target there. So uh, kind of cool. Um, so this one here did have a few charting songs in Canada, um, particularly the song Sing High, Sing Low, which went to the number one spot on the country charts in Canada. And then the song It Takes Time also charted. Sorry, I am just doing a little bit of, got a little bit of a write up here. Um, It Takes Time was also a charting song. It was released as a single. And one interesting fact, once again, I have not fully listened to this album yet, but one interesting fact about this particular album, or at least that particular song, It Takes Time, is it was written by Sherry Eichhardt. And uh, 
if you are familiar with the song Something to Talk About by Bonnie Raitt from the 1980s, early 90s, um, she also wrote that song um, for Bonnie Raitt. So a uh, big name writer on this particular album. So once again, uh, simple, straight, clean, and simple. And Marie here. All right. Uh, these next two are by the same artists. Um, Guy Lombardo uh, out of London, Ontario. Big band musician. Uh, tragically died kind of in a plane crash in the late 1970s. Uh, but he does some big band music. These two albums, I believe, this one's Drifting and Dreaming. But it's a lot of, it's pretty much compilation of music from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. Some, 50, from, some 60 songs on these two albums. Uh, so this one here is on the Capitol label. Um, one with the colorful ring on it there, so there you care. Um, and what I like about these albums is that on the back side, it actually gives you a little bit of a, a history as to, you know, kind of why uh, those, these records were written. Um, the second one by Guy Lombardo, this is the, uh, the and the band played on. Uh, this one here is on the DECA label once again a compilation um but very cool on the back side this one actually gives a bit of a history about uh guy lombardo and his royal canadians and the history behind that band um and why he came to be um i love big band music um one day i might do i do have some uh box sets that are here kind of behind me from uh the 1940s um, or at least compilations but like big band music my grandfather listened to uh, big band music when I was growing up so I've always kind of taken that one uh, with a little bit of interest so can't wait to t throw those ones on all right next up is my KTEL record I know that not everybody likes KTEL I know that it kind of compresses the files a little too much the sound quality is not always great but the reason that it is in this finds list is that KTEL uh, was a Canadian company uh, founded in Canada and uh, this particular one countdown I thought had some really great songs on it um, if you are not familiar with the KTEL label this is actually kind of a different label the other ones kind of have a little I don't know it looks like a little speaker kind of looking thing on it um, but they're always in yellow uh, but this one here has some tracks, a little Juice, Newton, Love's Been a Little Hard on Me, Only the Lonely by the Motels, um, Air Supply, Even the Nights Are Better, Joe Jackson, Stepping Out, uh, the Daz Band, Let It Whip, um, even got some Blondie, Paul Davis, Barry Manilow. So I think that this one, for a dollar, really good find. Um, and, you know, considering how k records were often treated, I mean, this one's just got some minor scuffs and stuff on it and it's in relatively good condition so looking forward to throwing that one on and i am an advocate for ktel records i do got quite a bit uh on the shelves uh behind me here all right my last official record itself is this one by a singer named david essig um, I don't know much about him. This one here is a complete blind buy. Never heard his music, but after doing a little bit of research, uh, this one's called Redbird Country. Um, he is a Canadian folk singer from the East Coast. Um, and so I'm kind of looking forward to this because I always like to, uh, to get things that I've never heard, musicians I've never heard. Um, there's not a lot of information on this guy. The only thing that I do know is that he kind of has his own uh, record uh, production company. Uh, this one is on Woodshed Records, which he uh, he kind of runs on his own. Uh, I'm not sure if it's still in existence or not, um, but, you know, kind of a plain and simple, you know, blue label here, the WR. Um, so if you if you know more about David Essig or any of his music, uh, feel free to leave some comments in the section below and let me know what you think. All right, so that brings me kind of to the conclusion, but I do have some bonuses. These ones are not Canadian, um, but I actually do not have any 78s in my collection. Um, and I thought that it was kind of cool. I got these ones for 50 cents. I never realized the weight of these. And then when I was um, incorporating them into my Discogs, I realized that these are some older ones. I mean, they don't have a lot of value to them. From the, These ones are from the 1920s. Um, 
but I thought it was cool um, that I got some 78s relatively cheap. Uh, so this one here is Arthur Godfrey uh, for me and my gal on one side and two fat polka on the other. So that's kind of cool. Um, let me know if you have any tips about 78s. I know a lot of people would just say throw them away, but if you have any tips on how to play them, I don't want to damage my machine, uh, my record player. It does have a 78 setting. Um, I did throw one of them on, uh, but it was rough, so I don't necessarily want to play them on my machine if, or on my player if it is going to do some damage. Okay, the second one I have is some Benny Goodman um, and his song, uh, what's it called here, Horo Staccato on one side and man here plays the piano on the other side so that's kind of cool once again 1920s and 1930s um but the reason that i really stumbled upon these 78s is this final one here um i do have an album with um tracks by this particular singer uh this irish musician john mccormick um i should have actually thrown out a shout out to him at uh uh, St. Patrick's Day, but I did not make a video. But John McCormick is something that, once again, growing up, my grandfather used to listen to. Um, I have a family heritage dating back to the 1820s from Ireland. And so I thought this was cool. Uh, John McCormick's Marchata on one side and Somewhere a Voice is Calling on the other. So these are some pretty cool finds that I had got while I was in Timmins. Um, these are just you know, six or seven of the ones that I got for our LPs. And then I got the three, you know, 78s here. Um, I am going to be making a series of videos. So please let me know in the comment section down below if you liked any of these. If you have any comments about the individual records, if you know more about them um, and what your thoughts are overall about these. Would you like me to do a Secret Santa video of the vinyl records that I got from my Secret Santa back in December? Uh, if so, you know, please leave a like, leave a comment, and we will see you on the next one. Please do subscribe. Have a good one.